I love you DSLR. You know, you're just so awesome with all of your lens selections and all of those cool buttons on the back and you're so functional and you're dependable and you're always there for me. Thank you. But I have some sad news. What? I don't know if you're long for this world. Oh no! We're being recorded! Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Reveal with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, but this time I have a rather sad prediction, and it is, could we be witnessing the death of our beloved DSLRs? Now obviously, if you compare a DSLR with your inexpensive compact camera, no comparison, right? I mean, these cameras are awesome. They have excellent lenses, big sensors, lots of controls, tons of functionality. They are truly the workhorses and the most excellent of all cameras that are out there for most of us, right? But could things be changing? And I, I started thinking about this video a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I recall a cover from PC Magazine when it was published widely in hard copy form. And on the front of the cover, it had an image. And it was, you know, are we looking, I can't think of the actual title, but it was like, are we looking at the death of the film camera? And they had a beautiful model and she was split halfway down. And one side was a film image and the other side was a digital image. And the film Im image was beautiful, and the film image was horrible and pixelated and blotchy and terrible. And their conclusion at that point was basically that, no, we're not going to see the end of people using film cameras. Well, it only took a couple of years after that that just about everyone, unless you have a very special need, uses digital media. So things move pretty quickly in the world of photography. So what are the advantages of the DSLR? Well, I listed some of them where, you know, really they're the top, the top dogs with the best lenses, the best sensors, the best sets of controls, the uh, highest level of features. But really, what makes a DSLR a DSLR? Well, of course, it has interchangeable lenses, but it also has a mirror and I, you know, viewing system that is unique. So it has a flippable mirror that can flip that image uh, from its to to the to its sensor to the eyepiece, and then it has either a penta prism, which is best, or a penta mirror and cheaper DSLRs that allows things to kind of turn around the right way, so that when we're looking at them through the viewfinder, they look correct. And I guess there might be a, another advantage to a DSLR, and that is, is that you can view things when the image, when the camera is off. off. Now, that, now that is not much of an advantage for me, but I imagine maybe there are some people where that would be an advantage. Now there are, uh, are other advantages to a DSLR that are kind of changing. One is DSLRs traditionally had the largest and the most sophisticated sensors which was a huge advantage. They also had the best lenses, which was a huge advantage. They also had phase detection autofocusing. And that was, uh, the mirror and all that stuff was required for that because there was actually a separate chip that would uh, determine the phase detection. And phase detection in good light is a much quicker autofocus than uh, contrast detection, which actually maybe works a little bit better in poorer light. So we had all these advantages to the DSLR, but many of them are starting to whittle away. And so certainly now we can put huge sensors, APS-C full frame and probably beyond in the near future, in, in bodies that have no penta prism uh, or flippable mirror. 
And we see that in everything from big cameras that look just like DSLRs, like the Sony Translucent Mirror series, to um, all sorts of Micro Four Third cameras and, and all those cameras that have interchangeable lenses, but they're mirrorless. They all have big sensors. We're also starting to see phase detection on the chip. Now, this is something that uh, is a long time coming and will only improve with time. So today's phase detection on chip is good. A year from now, it's going to be better. The one complaint that people had about uh, using mirrorless cameras is they didn't have a viewfinder. Or if they did have a viewfinder, that viewfinder was very poor in quality and pixelated and had lag and all sorts of other things. But I can tell you, I just took an RX-10, a Sony RX-10 on vacation with me. There's a video um, if you want to go back a few videos. And boy, using that electronic viewfinder was an absolute true pleasure. It was clear, it was sharp, it offered additional information that I couldn't get from a traditional viewfinder, like it would give me a horizon and all sorts of other data that I needed, and I really liked using it. Now, maybe there are some instances in today's viewfinders where a, an optical viewfinder would still be better, but that's only going to change in, with time. So, so I think we're really looking at an evolution that's happening right in front of our eyes where you might see cameras that look like DSLRs but they're not going to be really DSLRs or you might see smaller cameras that have all of the features of a DSLR but of course they're going to be much smaller and lighter and much more consumer friendly. These big bulky guys really do offer an advantage of durability and stability for professionals a lot of people just don't want to carry around that much weight if they're just taking vacation shots or shots of their kid's soccer game or sporting events or plays or things. And you can do all those even now with less elaborate cameras. So are we witnessing the, the death of the DSLR? You know, I kind of think we are. And my fear is the tremendous investment that I have in lenses and accessories will go by. Um, so what I do hope is that manufacturers recognize this and as some of the big manufacturers like Canon and Nikon come to, to this realization and start developing cameras that are DSLR-like but maybe not DSLRs, that they allow us to use the current lens mounts and lens systems and accessories. If they can do that, they're going to have certainly a win-win combination because people will stay loyal to their brand and continue instead of migrating off to a different brand uh, just because they're mad that they've just lost thousands and thousands of dollars worth of uh, accessories that are now on the junk pile. So I guess that's my opinion. Please offer your opinion below if you have a different one and please subscribe. Um, it makes me uh, want to make more videos and if you get some free time, give my absolutely free, everything's free here, uh, a free podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's on iTunes and other podcatching sites. Of course, it's an audio podcast, completely different topic. I think pretty interesting. Have a great day, everyone. And I apologize if I have cat hair on my black shirt here. I tried to get it off but I have these cats that seem to love me and they just anytime they see me wearing anything dark they just want to jump up on my lap and rub up against me which I guess is a good thing but maybe not so good for video bye